to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Several South African companies are looking to contract with renewable independent power producers in an effort to reduce their emissions, secure power supply, and ensure greater electricity price certainty. Terence Kruger joins me to discuss this emerging trend. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. Arsenal Metal South Africa is the latest company to have called for bids from solar IPPs to supply its operations. That's correct. Uh, this week they issued a request for proposals or request for information from the market to see what appetite there was to produce uh, solar energy at their sites across the country. You know, uh, they have mills in Gauteng, Thunderbell Park in Furenachem, they have a mill in KwaZulu Natal, Newcastle. Saldana Bay currently is on care and maintenance, but they've also got the mine up in Tabazimbi. So they're looking at putting in solar photovoltaic energy production there on those sites, but they don't want to own and operate those power plants. They want RPPs to build them. And uh, they've called for bids for a 100 megawatt plant at Funderbal, another 10 megawatt plant for the head office at Funderbal, and then 10 megawatt plants across the country at their other sites. And this is now a growing trend amongst corporate South Africa. Sassel in May issued a uh, request for uh, proposal information from uh, RPP similarly uh, for its operations and is looking for a whopping 600 megawatts of uh, renewable electricity. And what's really driving this is one, yes, the climate change emergency and the need for these companies to lower their carbon emissions but they also want price pass certainty. Uh, prices, as we know, tariffs uh, uh, from Eskom have been rising really steeply over the last decade. And there's also a lot of uncertainty about where tariffs are going from the major utility. So this, will, this contracting with corporate power purchase agreements with RPPs will give them greater certainty over that electricity tariff. And then, Obviously, there's that added benefit of lowering emissions, which gives them a reputational advantage in the market, especially for these large companies, someone like Sassel, who's under major pressure, and so is ArcelorMittal from in the environmental community and lobby groups, so to show that they are taking serious action on this front. Um, so it's a combination of security of supply in a context where Eskom, we know that their uh, coal-fired power stations have been operating very reliably and we've had load shedding. It's price path certainty. And then there's this added benefit of environmental uh, responsibility. What is the potential for this across corporate South Africa? Well, I think it's fairly significant. We know that the president in his State of the Nation address earlier this year said that government is going to try and facilitate self-generation as a way of alleviating South Africa's electricity crisis. Now, a lot of corporates in South Africa are looking to do this, whether it's shopping malls, putting solar onto their rooftops, factories doing the same, or on a larger scale, the mining industry is looking at using the land that's adjacent to their sites to produce uh, uh, renewable electricity, either directly themselves or through, again, RPPs. So the, the Mineral Council of South Africa has suggested that over close to 2,000 megawatts of pent-up supply is really there if we liberate the self-generation market. So I think this is a trend that we'll see continuing. The issue is whether the regulatory environment is amenable to facilitating these transactions. What still stands in the way of more companies and municipalities taking the self-generation step? Well, I think the policy and regulatory environment are the key here. We know that our policy has been very restrictive in terms of self-generation. And then we've also got a very, very onerous uh, regulatory environment. We know that many corporates, households, and municipalities would like to do a lot more self-generation. The issue is that when, when you want to do more than one megawatt, you need to apply for a license from MRSA. This is a very onerous process. Uh, for a project below, for instance, 10 megawatts. So you're treating a project slightly above one megawatt, almost like a utility scale uh, project. So you have to jump through all the uh, licensing hoops. So that is an onerous process. And then uh, at the municipal level, we still have a policy sort of lacuna 
in terms of uh, whether municipalities are allowed to contract directly with IPPs. We know that there's a court case between the city of Cape Town and, and, and Mercer and the national government on this issue. And I think that the court needs to give us some clarity that really we just need to have a, a policy a certainty in this area backed by regulation that is not onerous where the red tape uh, is easy to navigate. We do need red tape. These are uh, uh, power plants. Uh, there are safety issues involved here. We would need to have visibility of what is generating um, for the grid as well as for, um, for safety reasons. So we do need to have uh, some sort of rules around this. But uh, the rules of the game currently are not really fit for purpose, are not really facilitatory. So we need to do a real deep dive into what would help municipalities, corporates and households connect to the grid in a way that is supportive of least cost energy. Now, that doesn't mean grid defection. In fact, we want people to feed into the grid. We want the grid to be backing us up because that is the least cost model. If we have grid, grid defection, uh, we're going to be, it's going to lead us to a situation where municipalities in Eskom are left with only those households and individuals who are in the least uh, opportune position to pay for the electricity. That is not the sort of scenario we want to see playing out. We want to see a scenario where we have multiple generators all connected through a system that helps us share, share the burden of the costs and spread the benefits. And we, we're some way off from that. And I think there is a, a growing realization that Eskom can't do it all, that the current model of vertical integration is not fit for purpose, and that we need to liberate corporates and municipalities in particular to either build or procure their own power. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.